So uh, in this final um, uh, part of the uh, unit, I'm going to just say a little bit about how you can do things to try and avoid explicit loops. So as I said, when we discussed with the uh, NP where function um, in the previous part, the, um, it's a good example of how you can avoid having to have a loop, um, the, uh, actually manually write out a for loop. Um, and then as I said, this is important because it's much, much faster to use the built-in um, implicit looping um, that NumPy has, and particularly because it also will, where possible, use the parallel execution instructions in your processor. Um, assuming you've got the right version of the NumPy libraries installed and everything, but um, it is always going to be much, much faster. So you should always try and avoid writing for loops when you're working with NumPy arrays, if you possibly can, because if you end up writing a for loop, the chances are you're probably doing something a bit wrong, or at least not quite the optimal way. Um, so um, the, the first thing you really want to go and um, uh, need to do is to first I'll say, well, do you actually need to do anything special anyway? And this comes back again because all of the NumPy array functions um, and all the mathematical operators, they're all aware of arrays and so they normally go and do the, the sensible thing. Um, and so we saw that before with um, uh, where we had um, uh, arrays of uh, equal size and we could add them together um, and it would just work and you can see here I've just done uh, take the first array and then adds two times the square root of the second array and it just goes off and does that sum um, and that's because the numpy sqrt function knows what an array should do the multiplication operator knows that if it has a constant times an array it should multiply each element by that constant um, and then the addition operator knows it should be able to just add the elements so long as it can work out how to add the elements together so I said when we first went over this in, in the first part of this unit that this was governed by a thing called broadcasting rules. Um, and so what happens when NumPy is asked to go and work with two arrays? First of all, just if they're the same size, it'll just go and do it. If they're not the same size, and particularly if they've got different shapes, then what it does is it decides that it can work with them if starting with its last dimensions given. So if it's two dimensions, that would be the number of columns. Um, if it's a vector, it's just the number of rows. If it's a three-dimensional array, that's the number of pages. Um, so if the, the length of those last dimensions of the two uh, things it's got to work with are the same, then it says, yes, okay, I can broadcast those. So for example, I can add a vector of three column of three rows to a 2D array, so long as I have three columns, and it will know what to do. What it'll actually go and do is it'll add um the um first row of the vector to the first column um the second row of the vector to the second column and the third row uh to the third column um uh and that's how it expands it it'll also work if that shape of that last dimension is one um uh then it'll it'll also accept it so um actually if one works through all the combinations with so you can find that all the sort of easy normal rules work. So if you do two plus um, some big array, it says, ah, oh, well, two has got a dimension of, of just one because it's a scalar number. Um, uh, and so, or, or rather more, the, the well, two's got no dimensions because it's a scalar. And so implicitly the, the size of the last dimension is one. So that's fine, it can work. Um, if you have, as the example I just gave, a, a vector of three rows and a, um, 2D array of two rows by three columns, then it says, ah, yes, the, on the one hand, the vector um, has just one dimension and that's of length three, and the 2D array has two dimensions, but the last one, the number of columns is length three, so they're the same, so we're good to go. Um, so if you get that wrong, um, then it gives you the, the um, value error saying you can't broadcast things together. So in this example here, I've defined um, an array of uh, two rows and three columns and a row vector um, of uh, two rows. So it's gone and said, now I'll try adding them together. And it's coming back and saying, I can't broadcast two by three with two. And that's pulled and foul of rule one because the two dimensional array has three columns and the row vector only has two rows. 
If on the other hand, I take the transpose of that uh, 2D array, then I have something which is uh, three rows by two columns. And now when I do the sum, it says that's fine. And um, if you look at the numbers, then you'll see what it's actually done is it's um, added the uh, first row of that row vector of that vector to the all the things in the first column there um, to the three, four, and five. So that was one, two, and three. And it's added the uh, second uh, row from the vector to the second column um, and given us 10, 11, 12 there. Um, so we just go back and inspect what we started with. I was adding six. So I was adding two to one, two, three, and I was adding six to four, five, and six. Um, and that's indeed what we got. So um, if you need to do more complicated calculations, so where you actually have to write, have some function which has to operate over each element in turn, um, then again, it might be tempting to go and do some kind of explicit for loop and say um, for element in array, um, and then do the calculation with the, um, the your function. So you some, some complicated calculation function, which is gonna work per element, um, I have the for loop like that. Um, but actually that's not necessary. You can make your function that you've written for just one element uh, become array aware, so it can actually handle being fed an array with a special numpy vectorize function. And what vectorize does is it takes your function and it wraps it in a way that makes it um, handle any array of any shape or size that you want to feed it. Um, and doing vectorize is better than writing explicit for loops. Not only is it a bit easier to read because um, there's less lines of code, but it's also a bit faster because it can build a fast loop um, around calling that function. It's still not as fast as using the kind of native numpy functions directly, but um, if you can't express your the, the thing you're trying to calculate um, adequately in a um, you know just using the numpy uh, built basic functions, then um, uh, vectorize is a way of getting a kind of intermediate halfway house between the native numpy functions and writing an explicit loop. So here's a rather stupid example. Um, I write a little function which can take uh, the value I get it and returns a string. Um, now it's important to say here that this would not work if I just fed it an array of values because if I feed it an array into that function, is going to try indexing my list of one, two, three, four, five, six with an array. Um, and that's not what I want to go and do. And it's not going to, it's just not going to work with a list. Um, so that would be the, that would not be um, a good thing to go and do. Um, on the other hand, I could actually write an array version of this by simply making that list of one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on into an array. But um, for the purposes of this demonstration, this is a function which we can't just feed an array at and, it, and it's going to work. So I create, um, in this case, I'm going to create a 2D version of my um, dice with just 50 values in it, just to make it not print out crazy amounts of stuff. So I can show it on the slide. And I'm going to create, um, this vectorized make string. Um, so this is the result of calling np vectorize on my function. So notice I'm just giving it the name of the function and vectorize is going to um, create a new function, um, which I'm gonna to assign to the variable vectorized make strings. So vectorize make strings is now something which behaves like a function that knows how to deal with arrays. Um, and so I can just call it with an array and you see it returns an array of strings, um, which is called by calling each element of that function on every element in my array. So um, without having to find the function explicitly that knows how to loop over arrays, I'd be able to make something which does work over arrays reasonably efficiently. Um, so the vectorize makes functions which will go over every element in the array, but of course, that's not always what you want to go and do. Sometimes what you'd like to go and do is say, look at all the values in one particular direction. So all the values in one column or all the values in one row and use that and then apply that to them in, in, in a function. And so NP apply along axis is designed to go and exactly uh, do this to avoid you having to have a for loop um, to loop over your code. 
So in this case, I've written a little function that's going to take a, a rather a row or a column of my data, and it's simply going to count how many times that was equal to six. Um, and then I'm going to use the um, apply along axis and give it the name of that function. I tell it which axis I want it to work on. So in this case, I'm going to say you're going to look along the um, uh, the rows and you're going to tell me an answer for each column. And I give it the array of data that it should go and look at. And it then counts the number of sixes I had in each column of my uh, set of dice rolls. Um, and I can do the same, but this time with axis one. So now I'm telling it to look um, across all the columns along each row, and it's telling me um, the number of sixes there were in each row. So NP apply along axes is a way of applying a function to every row or every column, depending which way around you need it to go and work. If you get to the point where you really can't avoid the loop, then, uh, and it does happen sometimes, then you're going to end up having to use an explicit loop. So by default, um, NumPy will iterate over the first dimension. So in other words, if you have a, um, a two-dimensional array, it's going to iterate over the rows um, and return 1D arrays corresponding to each row in turn. If you're iterating over a simple vector, then iterating over the rows is just going to return a number uh, each time. So uh, in this case here, again, I'm going to look at my two-dimensional array of dice throws. If I iterate over them, then I'm iterating over the rows. And so if I print out each row, you see I get 10 numbers because I had 10 columns in the data set. If instead I want to iterate over the columns, then the easiest way is to simply transpose the data first. Um, and so because that's just adding a dot t at the end of it, um, and you can see in this example I'm doing the same thing, but now I've got um, 10 columns with five numbers because I've got five rows in the data set. And so I've just switched around which way around I'm iterating over the loop. But as I said, where possible, you want to avoid using for loops with non-peer arrays because it is going to be slower. But as I said, sometimes it just can't be helped. <laughs> 